What's up, traders? This is the watch list video for Monday, May 3rd. Um, as I always do, starting off with the SPY daily chart. You can barely see, uh, let me zoom in a little bit here. That's the, again, the horrific intraday range on the SPY on Friday. You saw it on Wednesday, Tuesday, Monday, a week before that, and so on. Um, you know, the, the range is terrible. Uh, a, little more, a little more volume on Friday, but anyway. Um, Still a really a bunch of really good stuff in the chat room. Uh, I'll bring over my favorite call uh, because I made it, <laughs> and it was over 31. The high of day well, you can't see it here, but was slightly above 31. So the whole number inflection point after the gap down on the stock that's been really really hot. So I called it and I typed it out in chat as well. Over 31 idea when it broke went pretty quickly to almost 34. Flagged for a little bit and was off to the races and. What you don't see here um, is how high, I'll, I'll show you, let me get this out of the way. Let's go to BTX. What you don't see is it actually went to almost 60, went to 59.58 from that 31 call without ever re revisiting 31, by the way. And to take it a step further, um, I think went to like 75 in after hours, um, which is insane. So anyway, uh, that's, that's my biggest highlight from Friday for those that weren't in chat. Um, this is, by the way, is going to be on watch. It's stupid extended, um, but it's going to be on watch, you know, every day for the next couple of weeks because it's just been so insane. So I'll start with that one. Um, MVIS had the huge run, then sold off for a few days, then came out with earnings, which everyone said, whoops, this, there was no reason for this run. Um, I actually did call this long in chat, though, for those that weren't there again. Um, see this early high here, uh, 1537 when it started to curl back up. Um, I actually can't remember if I called over 37 or through 25 uh, to get kind of a jump on a quarter number inflection point with a high of day above, but um, I did take that trade and it went to 1594. Um, so that one ended up being a decent little day trade as well. Um, nothing like BTX though. But anyway, we're going to watch that one again just because it's been in play. I don't like it very much anymore just because of the action. Um, I don't know who's winning now, right? You know, Bulls won on... Technically, bulls won from the opening bell on on uh, Friday, uh, but a lot of bag holders in it too. So, I, I'm kind of on the fence whether that should even be on the watch list, but it is. RHE really big volume closed well off of its highs, um, but I'm going to watch it because it, it was making some really big moves lately. So we're going to keep that one on watch. Um, I already talked about BTX. Let's see, S O N N, a big volume day. So we're just gonna look for some kind of follow through day tomorrow. ISNS, um, man, if I, I, I didn't even have this on a chart anymore. Um, I had it on the chart as a morning gapper, right? So it gaps, uh, I mentioned it over the early high ID over 573, which gave a nice trade. I didn't get it, but if anyone took it, they gave a nice trade. But what happened here, all right, so now it actually, you know, um, mid morning, late morning, showing you five minute candles here, it takes out the low of day and then look what happens. It just chops along, it rolls back over. So at this point, shorts are winning, right? After the opening bell, shorts are winning. Um, it's probably not gonna revisit the high of day. And so this is probably gonna bleed for the next few days. And then lo and behold, wait for it, boom. In the afternoon, it didn't keep falling um, and shorts were forced to cover late in the day. This is just what you call a, a you know 10 minute short squeeze. Um, sadly, it halted here and then didn't open. Um, let me see if I can show you like two minutes. You can't really tell here, but it halted. And I don't think it opened till maybe right after um, the closing bell. I'm not sure how that went. I, I, I did say in chat, I bet you this doesn't open until right after the closing bell. And I think that's what happened. Um, and I'm not sure. I think after hours, it went up over seven, but you would have had to almost been in it before the halt. Anyway, long story short, had I seen this, let me do this, this little curl back up, um, which I didn't have it on a chart anymore because I'd given up on it for a potential long, right? I thought, okay, shorts one, I'm not gonna watch it, so I replaced it with something else. Um, had I seen this, to me, this is a Tokyo all day, especially maybe through six with the high of day above with five minutes left in the day. So had I seen it, I would have been grabbing that at, at the very least through six because shorts were in trouble. And then, of course, I would have been forced to hang out in after hours um, because uh, it halted and then opened in after hours, but which is fine. 
Anyway, um, I don't know how much that late day momentum on a Friday is going to carry over into uh, into Monday morning, but we're going to have it on watch. It's definitely on long watch, you know, closed at its high. So big volume day for it too. It should catch some attention as people scan for plays next week, you know, for this week or this weekend for next week. So um, VXRT, another one that uh, ran in after hours, I think, to maybe over 12. Um, I liked this one. I was talking about it late in the day, um, but I never got involved. Um, I would have watched it in after hours, but I just wanted to start my weekend and it did give an after hours setup that we teach. Um, anyway, we're going to watch that one. It's really, really strong lately. So we're going to watch it. Um, OCGN, interesting chart, had the big pop back here. As I said earlier in, in, in other videos, had an offering, which slapped it back down this day. When you have an offering like that, and it, it ends up trading above the offering and curling up, you've got a potential for a short squeeze here. Um, this high before the offering was 13.65. Friday's high, 13.37. So for me, um, I would like it over 13, over Friday's high, knowing you've got a potential catalyst, potential catalyst, and maybe even a target up here. So I do like the looks of this chart. OCGN definitely going to be one of my um, top watches next week. OSTK had the gap up on earnings. It ran for a little bit and then ripped to new lows, but showing strength right away again the next day. So that goes on long watch, only for an A-plus intraday setup. I do not hold stocks overnight, so um, that just, like these others, goes on my watch list. Skills, um, looking for an afternoon breakout on this. It just had this really nice move. Now you've got four days lower on, you know, on declining volume, SKLZ. We're gonna watch that one. Um, TIRX. I don't love this one, but I mean, it had a big move back here. Uh, the range was 1320 low to 2265 high on that in the, on this day. And now you've just kind of, you can almost argue it's not really a flag because it's almost round trip, but it is declining on, uh, or yeah, falling on declining volume. So it's been on bounce watch for a day or two. It's just going to go back on bounce watch for Monday. And then lastly, CLOV, just a recent high flyer with a couple days lower. Um, nothing real tricky there. We're gonna watch that for an A-plus setup too. Um, that's it, we're gonna add gappers to this list as well in the free market. Uh, should be plenty to trade this week. And trading with, with those narrow SPY range days, uh, trading uh, with the teamwork in the chat room has, has really been great. I had a great week and let's keep it going next week.